So we're looking at sort of 100 to 150. Can't believe I found it for 2 99 Good morning guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I thought I'd do something different, kind of like a day in the life sort of video of a full-time reseller. So it's Monday morning, bright and early, got woken up at 6am by a screaming baby. She wouldn't go down, so I thought I might as well wake up. Um, it's now half seven, I've had a bit of a slow morning, just had breakfast and everything like that, took it easy. We're now in the garage, I've got 10 orders to pick over the weekend, so pretty average for me, but pretty nice sales. Another thing I wanted to touch on today is listing. I've picked up a load of items over the weekend, not the best car boots. You'll see it in my video, which is either going to come out before this or after this, I don't really know when, whenever I get time to edit it. But we've got three bags here full of stock. This was from my Sunday car boot. It wasn't as good as I thought it would be. But there are still some nice items to go through. There's a nice uh, PS1 I picked up with uh, Overboard in there. Brilliant game. But we also have Saturday car boot. My plan with the Saturday car boot is to keep most of that stock just for winter. So go to Saturday, get all the stock I can, put it in a box and leave it up until winter time because winter for me is always a bit of a killer and it's just nice to have a bit of a backlog to go through just to get listed even if it's like 10 20 items per week it's still adding to the shop giving that little boost throughout winter just to help q4 out but you got to think about these things when you're a full-timer so starting off the orders for the weekend we have this technics amplifier i paid five pound for this just on its own no other hi-fi separates or anything and it sold for 22 pound not a lot I couldn't test it properly. It's not in the best condition. I took the top cover off and it was caked in dust pretty much. So I just pretty much sold it spares repair. It's quite a nice vintage bit of kit. So someone's gonna want it. It did sit around for probably around six, seven months, which is quite a long time. I thought it might have a bit more value to it because it weighs a ton. It's got some good weight to it. So just thought it was a bit of a quality product, but obviously not very desirable. And the next sale was the Sebago men's shoes. I paid 10 pound on the car boot for these. You can see the uppers are pretty much in brand new condition. There is a little bit of wear on the sole. They look like they've been worn a couple of times. Problem with leather soles, you wear them once and they get really scratched up and it looks like they've been worn for years, but that's still nice and thick, as you can see. And these have sold for £36 plus postage. I paid £10 for these at the car boot. Top brand to look out for, Sebago. And next up, we have this really nice Tom Ford suede glasses case. This owes me, I think, probably around about a fiver. I paid £20 for three cases. One of the cases had a pair of Ray-Bans in it, which I think I sold for about 50. And yeah, I've just been selling the luxury cases off one by one. So yeah, from the car boot sale, £20. Like I said, it's probably got about a fiver in that. That one alone sold for 15, so I'm pretty happy with that. It did sit around for around three or four months, but got it gone eventually. And the next sale is this really nice pair of quilted kickers. These are pretty much brand new. I paid only £8 for these about two weeks ago at the A3 Guildford car boot. Someone sent me quite a generous offer of £40. So again, I'm pretty happy to take that and just keep the cash flow coming in. Right, so this is quite interesting. I picked up these Lokes, which I've also sold just now for £45. I think I paid about £8 for these, but they're in a box, which I never really go to. For some weird reason, I don't go to box 13. I just leave it and... <laughs> Here's a good reason why you should stock take quite often because I've just picked up this board game which again has been sat around for about six months and I haven't really touched it or moved it since I put it in the box but underneath it was this Sony cassette player and it caught my eye because the last month or so I picked up and sold two of these and I'm thinking why hasn't this one sold and I've just checked my listings and it's not even listed if we um just type in Sony on my sold listings We've got one there that sold for 25 quid with the power cable and one there which sold for 22 pound without the power cable. I have no idea why that was sat at the bottom of that box unlisted. It just makes you wonder how much other stock I have laying around in these boxes, which is completely unlisted. But, oh well, I'll get it listed today and hopefully that will sell within the week. And we then have going down here into my sort of shoebox area, these bricks have sold. So I was a bit sceptical about picking these up for £20, I think just last week, but I took an offer of £48 for them. So not amazing profits, probably around £20, £25 overall profit once you include fees and tax and all that sort of stuff. But I saw the label on the box, £120, and they're asking 20 quid. They are used, but the condition is still pretty clean and fresh, so I was happy to pick them up. If you wanted to see the video, go back to my videos, look at my last car boot video, and you'll see these getting picked up straight away. So here's a little box of heaven for you guys. Loads of uh, N64 games. Uh, one is sold, classic 007 GoldenEye. 
that has sold for £11 plus, I think, £3 postage. Uh, I got this in a bundle for £25, loads of games, two Mario Karts, the console, cables, all that kind of stuff. £25, so that just makes back a little bit of my money. It's taken a bit of a while to sell. Maybe my price is a little bit high. I should probably go around and tweak them all. But overall, it'll, it'll eventually sell. It's all Nintendo 64 gaming stuff. It will fly out at some point. And next up, we have this Xbox 360, which is literally just the empty box. I had up for £30 and somebody offered £22. Uh, at first, I counted at £25, but then they came back to me again with £22 and just said that's all they've got. It was plus, I think, £4.50 postage. So I just thought, you know what, it's just an empty box. It's not just a standard Xbox, it is the Tomb Raider Halo 4 version. I think I paid a couple of quid at the car boot. Don't pass up empty boxes, they do sell very well. And once again, another empty box. This is an iPod Classic 160 gig. It owes me about a pound from the car boot. So I had that for a tenner and someone, somebody offered £6.50 plus £3 postage. So I just snapped that up. But most people will just throw this stuff away. So it's money at the end of the day, it all adds to the final payout. And the last of the sales was this Harry Potter Gringotts Bank. It's like a little money box. You put the coins in the front and then I think you can kind of move that and his little hands go up and down, the little goblin's hands. Uh, yeah, don't buy this. This sat around for about a year. Uh, I paid 50p for it and it only sold for about £6, I think. Uh, I'll just double check that. Oh no, not even £6. £5 that sold for. Money's money, but it's a bit pointless really. Obviously, not much value in it at all. So there's everything. That's 10 orders over the weekend. Not too bad, quite steady. I've been accepting quite a few offers. Pretty happy with this. I mean, it adds to the payout. I've got a really nice payout coming tomorrow morning. I've hit targets for the week. Now to focus on to next week. So I'm just packing up and I thought I should mention, I like to use the same boxes for my shoes. Obviously, you've got the kickers down there. These are the Lokes, but you don't want to be sending to the wrong person. Well, you don't want to be sending the wrong item to the wrong person. So what I do, obviously I get my scales over here, stick this on there. What's that give us? Just over a kilogram. So I would literally just write on here where the label's gonna go. So around here. Got Loke there, just showing that it's over one kilogram. So when I go to print the label, I know the exact weight of it, put that in. I know that these are the Lokes. It just saves many mistakes down the line. I've, I've heard a lot of stories of people sending the wrong parcels to people and, and the two customers having to exchange almost and like send one another to each other. Luckily, I've never had it happen. I try and be very organized when I'm packaging and make sure I mark down, as soon as it's packaged, mark down exactly what's in the box with the weight. And you can see they're the exact same boxes, so it'll be quite easy to make that mistake. Okay, so we've just had hopefully the first sale of the day. It is this Costa Coffee mug. I had up for, I think, £20, oh no, £17.99, and they've sent a very generous offer of £15 plus postage. So I'll just accept that. Yeah, boy. Good start to the day. It's only 20 past eight, so hopefully that's the first of many today. And in case you were wondering, I paid a pound for this travel mug and it sold for 15 so not bad at all do look out for these costa and starbucks travel mugs and sort of uh, ceramics and things like that because they do sell really well go on quick print all right guys so just like that we've got all parcels packaged got a few from my wife as well because she's got a few going out and we have labels printing right here so i've put the label printer up here now so it just kind of flows down nicely down onto the desk and then once they're done you can just put them down nice and easy so here we go we got 10 labels all there obviously i'm not going to show you the exact addresses <laughs> but what you can do now is simply just put them down nice and easy and stick them on the parcels all right here we go there's our thing all packaged up bagged up we've got 16 in total that's 10 of mine six of my wives they are own <laughs> six of my wife's <laughs> six orders are from my wife they're only like small little auction orders just to get rid of stuff um but yeah do check out damien db resales i'm seeing he's just picking up a few shoes that's my sort of morning content i'm watching this morning some nice finds on some dms right there actually so if you're watching damien well done on them congrats let's get this lot to the shop and we will start the day I'm probably going to hit some charity shops and just go from there and really, see where the day takes me. We're at the first charity shop. It's very humid today. It's pretty nasty. Just really, no, there's no breeze at all in the air. So pretty horrible, really sticky. But anyway, um, yeah, first charity shop. We'll see what we can find. I haven't got the mount or anything. I'll just go in and come back to the car and show you what I found. Hopefully some good stuff. I usually find at least one item in this shop, but we'll go from there anyway and see what we can find. 
Right, nothing amazing in that first charity shop. There was a pair of Timberland shoes, really nice, but they wanted 30 quid for them, so a bit too much for me. I did, however, pick up this little mini trains Flying Scotsman. Paid a fiver for it, bit of a gamble. I didn't research it in the shop. I probably should have, because they only sell for about 10 to 15 quid. As you can see, it's just a tiny little miniature Flying Scotsman. It's quite cool. The wheels actually spin round on it. I just thought there might be a bit more value in it than five pound, but oh well, one of those things. It will definitely sell, it just might not make much profit and then the second pickup just this little bag of star wars figures they're quite cool i've sold star wars figures before usually in a little bundle like this i did pay a fiver there's six figures in there so less than a pound each i'll do some more research at home and hopefully make some profit out of that too all right we have arrived in alton in hampshire if you know that it's kind of my local grounds for charity shopping i do pretty well here last time i was here in fact i found three luxury pairs of glasses in one charity shop it was two pairs of ray-bans and a pair of pradas that were all authentic all genuine and everything paid 10 pound for the pradas and seven pound each for the ray-bans i'll show you on the screen now because one of the ray-bans actually sold last week it was a vintage pair of the sort of slimline small really really small actually glasses and yeah customers happy with them they sold for 80 quid so the other pairs are up for over 100 each. So very good profits. Hopefully we can have some finds like that today. We'll see what we can find. I'll be back in a second just to um, show you what I got. All right, guys, we are back in the car. So very successful charity shop trip. I treated myself to a haircut after finding probably one of my favorite and best charity shop finds ever. We are back in the garage. What an amazing little charity shop run that was. I usually go to the charity shops in Alton. If I do well, I usually end up getting a little haircut, a little treat for myself. So anyway, let's start with what I found. Oh, also the lady who bought the Costa Cup has finally paid. I say finally, it only took about two hours. But usually if they don't pay immediately, they never pay at all, I find. So to start off, I went in the first charity shop, found these two, which I've already shown you on camera. Nothing too special in them. Maybe five to 10 pound profit overall. So not amazing, but gets the ball rolling. In the next charity shop, we found this Jaguar tie, which was only two pound it cost me. So not too bad at all. I've got no idea on the resale value. I'll put some soles on the screen if I can find any and go from there. But two pound, I'm pretty safe, I think. And the next shop, we got these Frank Thomas motorcycle trousers. These I think are men's size XL. So brilliant size to have. Frank Thomas, great brand. You've got padding in the knees. So I paid £4.50 and hopefully getting back £35 to £40 for these ones. So don't pass up on cycle trousers. It did also have a jacket with it, but unfortunately it wasn't actually Frank Thomas. So I left that behind and it was like a tenner. So £10 for an unbranded motorcycle jacket. There might be a bit of profit in there for someone who wants it, but I'm not going to take that chance. And they're quite big to store. So really only pick it up if you have the space. And next up, Totopoli. Yeah, I think it's like a horse racing game, vintage, made by Waddingtons. I've sold this quite a few times. It did used to have a lot more value to it, sort of 25 to 30, but recently it's dipped quite a lot. I paid four pound for this one, just because the box is in nice clean condition. I might just stick it in the loft and keep it till like Christmas time, and maybe aim for that sort of 20, 25 quid. But we'll wait and see. If the solds are good now, I might just stick it on, get it gone. And lastly, this beauty right here. This is Space Crusade by MB Games. And there's a price tag right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it says £2.99, which is absolutely mental. At first, I didn't actually know what it was, but I knew I'll probably go pick it up, whatever. Even if I couldn't check solds or anything like that, I still would have picked it up because it's a nice big box. You can tell it's vintage. MB Games, 15 to £20 pound value at least. Uh, but yeah, checking solds. I will show you a little screenshot now or maybe like a screen record of just the solds of these and the little figures and you'll be pleasantly surprised, just like I was in the shop. <laughs> so, couldn't believe it at the time. You saw it on Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram, it's uh, Jammy Dodger Flips, just like the channel. Crazy find. I haven't actually opened it up yet to have a look inside, but I think I'm pretty safe with whatever's in there, even if it's incomplete, you can probably separate all the parts out. There we go, we can see on the back, very similar to like the Warhammer sort of figures, Games Workshop, also, from the makers of Hero Quest, which is another quality game to look out for. I can't believe I've never heard of this one, to be honest, in all my years of reselling. <laughs> but anyway, I'll open it up and we can have a quick look inside. I don't really know what to look out for because I don't know what should be there, apart from lots of little figures, but you've got a few boards. Yeah, four boards, I assume that makes a square. You've then got the instruction, two instruction booklets, but well, that's being kept in its bag, whatever that is, some little cards. 
Oh, lovely. They're in their bags as well, so I can only assume they're going to be complete if they've been kept in the bags. So some, whoever owned this previously has definitely looked after it, because you've got all the cards there in a little bag. Again, all these little bits of card, tiny little figures there, or whatever they are, guns, I think, weapons. Uh, yeah, in a bag again. I've then got the sort of bulkier figures. They're really quite cool, actually. All just loose in the bottom of the box. It's probably going to be little things like this which are missing, but if there's like the odd piece missing, I'll probably go online and try and find it because I did see someone actually achieve £300 for this, which is just out of this world. But as much as I want to get into this and have a look to make sure it's complete, I will put it aside for now because I've got loads and loads and loads more stock to get listed. So all this here was from yesterday's car boot and I've got a few boxes down there which also need listing. So plenty to do. So I'm going to get to listing now and I'll kind of update you throughout the day on how it's going. And that's the second sale of the day. Again, it's only a small one, but all adds to the sort of overall profit of the day. I paid a pound for this umbrella stand. I have no idea what it is actually. Lady Claire Navy Blue, the Tower of London. It's just an aluminium umbrella stand. I guess you put it at the front of the house and keep your umbrellas in it. Or you can use it for whatever you want to use it for. Ten pound. Paid a pound. We've come across a little issue with these fit flops. You just saw me um, cleaning up and listing during the uh, time lapse. The issue is the label has completely worn off on the inside on both of them, which is really annoying. The only thing I can only just make out is a USA 8 on that one, which luckily these are actually USA as well. And they're the same fit flop brand of boots. USA is a UK 6. And if I match that up with that one, pretty much is the same size. The boot may look a little bit bigger just because it's a boot, but I'm fairly confident in saying that these are a UK 6. It's just little things like this which <laughs> cause a bit of an inconvenience during the day. Um, but you know, we figure it out and luckily I had these sort of backup boots just to help me with that. I've got to say, the charity shops have been so kind to me recently because these are actually Goodyear welted sold Lokes, which are obviously made in England. And look at the price tag on that, two pound. It's actually incredible. I found these on Friday, I believe. Yeah, Friday. And they've got rubber soles. I think they've got like part leather, part rubber. Occasionally you get people who put rubber soles on top of the leather. So do keep an eye out for that. But these look like they're the original levers, uh, rubbers, I mean. All I've done with these ones is simply get a baby wipe on it, give them a good wipe over, buff them off with a microfiber and they'll be ready for photos. And literally, just as I turned the camera off, I got my third kitchen of the day, which is these Clark school shoes here. They've sold for £24.69p. That's including postage. Not too bad. I think I paid a pound for them at the car boot. They're really nice condition. They're just simple, simple Clark shoes. So I'm just going through my stock I found yesterday at the car boot and look at these Timberlands. I paid £2 for these. Yeah, she wanted £2 for them because of the condition. They are very dusty and almost like, it's not, it's not mold, but it's just like lots of little dots of dust. Doesn't look great, there's the soles there. But of course you've always got to see past this because I've just literally given this one a wipe over. It took about two minutes. And look at the condition of that now. It is so fresh. Really nice and clean. No damage at all, just, they were just covered in dust and she got rid of them very, very cheaply. That's pretty much it now for the video other than just finishing a bit of editing for tomorrow's video for the car boot one. Uh, I'm just doing that now, as you can see. So I'll probably make this my final listing of the day because it's so hot out here and i'm really struggling in this heat so it's time to go inside i guess and just uh, i'll probably crack on with the edit just where it's a little bit cooler if you enjoyed this please do hit the like button also hit the subscribe button with the little bell next to it just so you can be notified whenever i release a video anyway thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one goodbye